This is a video clip from episode 8 of the Average Joe Lawn Care Show with John Perry. I have to ask this because I know it's one of the hotter topics at some point in the year with mm -hmm. aerate and mechanical aeration and those types of things. Yes. Um, so is there anything you could add to that or yeah, add to that discussion? I would love to. So we did a trial uh, in, in 2020. It was really I'm going to I'm going to call it very fascinating. And honestly, there's a lot of data that we're still pulling out that created some some questions um, as far as what was happening with the turf itself when we did the study. But uh, just to round it off. So. At the. Let's call it the 12 week mark. OK, so we, we're running through the season where we, we've got this aerate treatment. We've got this mechanical aeration. We've got uh, aerate with fertilizer. We've got all these different things. We're, we're taking all these metrics along the way. Every week, UGA is, is taking these measurements all along the way. Uh, soil compaction, surface hardness, uh, water, root biomass, all of these different things so that we can see a true comparison of what's happening between the two. And the study used a hollow tine aerator that that punched six inches deep in the soil. So something that you would see more on a golf course than you would see ever in a professional lawn care or home home lawn care, uh, a pretty deep tine. Once you're, you're kind of rolling through this thing, the surface tension uh, was one of the things that stayed consistent between mechanical aeration and aerate and staying uh, at, at a much lower compressed rate than the non-treated check. As you moved through the entire year, uh, the root mass uh, between the two in the, again, soil removed, six inch cores or aerate, the root mass increases were identical. The water infiltration rates were identical. Uh, there were all of these things where we actually saw a total matchup between mechanical and the aerate product through the course of the study. And when you think about it, it, it's really interesting because there's two things that happen there with with a with an aerator that goes six inches deep in the soil. We're, we're pulling a plug, right? It's coming out. It's gone. But then with the other stuff, we're, we're applying a liquid over the top. So one is having to work from the top down and the other one is having to work from the bottom up. Right. So it's two very different things that are happening. If you were to take an say, just imagine Play-Doh for a second and you have this thing of Play-Doh and you take a hole out. And then you push down on that Play-Doh, it's going to come back together. So that alone is going to have a, a, a change in the compaction because you're moving everything into this different place. It has to sort of resettle into this new thing. But with a liquid application, you don't have that opportunity. The only thing that can really do that is the manipulation of the plant and whatever is happening in the soil below. So by the time the study was done, the effective compaction rate on the air rate section was two inches, was where measurable compaction relief took place between here and here. You had the exact same root mass increase between mechanical and, and putting this material down, the same surface hardness, the same water infiltration, everything matched up. And that, it was 50% greater than the check on the root mass. It was around... Uh, let's see, let's see if I can do the math on this, uh, 30%, no, 60% less time for water infiltration compared to the check area. Uh, you, you had all of these things that ended up ultimately matching out to what the mechanical aeration did. And it was so cool, but there were other things that we saw in there that were like, holy crap. Uh, we need to dive into this further because I, I looked at this, the first 28 days of the study, the check area performed better than either mechanical or with the liquid applied or with fertilizer applied or anything else. It did fine. It was as if when you fed in or pierced the ground, the, the soil was like, ah, break like it needed to reset like i, I don't want the, any of this you know and then all of a sudden it like reset and then it changed like there was a dramatic change like there was a stress put on the soil where the plant took advantage of it it pulled the water it did all of these different things so compaction actually increased even in the mechanical aeration section after the initial application was done for the first long while 
It was really cool. And so I have all of these new questions in my mind about where we're going to drive studies in the future. And I have to say it was fantastic. So takeaway is this. If you apply aerate, you're going to relieve compaction in your lawn. You're going to increase rooting mass, like we've always said. You are going to see increased water infiltration, and it's going to only increase with the applications over time. If you need to mechanically aerate, which I still don't say is a bad practice, the need for that is going to drop significantly. And I mean significantly. So there you go. Pretty cool stuff. I mean, I'm like, there's a lot of really cool things in there that are, are pretty exciting. Do you have plans to make uh, videos on those? Yo, oh, yeah, but I'm waiting until turf season because nobody watches sure. long videos right now. Sure. Sorry. I'm going to do one last question on the, the liquid or the aeration uh, turf mechanic. He yeah, said, yeah, yeah. Uh, what about doing both in the same season, liquid and mechanical? Fantastic. Actually, we ran that study as well. Um, and, and here's what's really interesting is through the, through the entire trial, which actually ended up taking, uh, I want to say it was around 12, may have been 14 weeks. Compaction of soil is constantly fluctuating with rain events, with irrigation events, uh, with drought, whatever else. There's, there's this constant flux that happens. There, there is no static level. And uh, the interesting thing about that is compaction relief was the greatest when you did the two combined. Mm. It was the greatest when the two were combined. But the root mass was less. That was really interesting. So it was as if you, you sort of triggered different plant responses one way or the other. So we may have had, uh, I think it was around a 35% increase in root mass when the two were together. But the compaction was relieved the most. When you had the aeration alone, you had a 50% increase in root mass. Great. The aerate alone, 50% increase in root mass. If you did aerate plus RGS plus our green punch, which we run as, as a DIY system, 125% increase in root mass. So it was a major difference just in that one alone. But I, I think one of the, the telling signs was this. On the front side of the test, water infiltration and things like that weren't increased. It took time before you saw, and that was including on the side. So it wasn't as if uh, one increased faster than the other. They, they both kind of graduated at the same rate, and then they equalized, and it was pretty cool. So, you know, when the, everything was run timed volumetrically, by the time we got to about 12 weeks out even, uh, it took around a minute for water to penetrate six inches deep in the soil on the mechanical aerated side, on the aerate side. On the check side, it took around three and a half minutes. So it was still improving the soil as time went on. Mm. That Yeah, that's one of the things I would imagine the liquid uh, would, would do over some mechanical aeration is that there may be more longer term effects that are the <clears throat> over the mechanical side of things that like you said, just take more time to actually start happening in the soil. And we are expanding our studies based on that. We've seen things that say, okay, what happens with timing? What happens with irrigation? What happens with this or that? We want to really see uh, what these improvements are as they stack on top of each other over time. I mean, it, it, it opened up some incredible questions and answered a ton of other ones. So it's like, how deep do you go down the rabbit hole is the next sure. question. Catch the Average Joe Lawn Care Show live on Friday nights at 8.30 p.m. Central Standard Time on the Lawn Guardian YouTube channel. It's always fun interacting with the audience in the live chat during the show, so we hope to see you there. If you couldn't catch the live show, watch it recorded on the Lawn Guardian YouTube channel or listen to the audio version of it by searching Average Joe Lawn Care Show on podcast platforms such as Spotify, Apple Podcast, and Google Podcast.